This is my 1995 Dodge Ram 3500, passed down to me from my father. And she's right in the middle of a pretty extensive rebuild to begin her new life as an expedition truck. Though admittedly, despite all of the work, the truck looks worse now than it did the day we started. In fact, to some people, it barely looks like a truck at all. So let's do a little recap. Prior to this project, the truck had sat for 17 years. So step one was teardown and identification of problem areas. Removing the service deck was relatively straightforward with the exception of the back, which was fabricated around and welded to the frame. Once the deck was removed, it was nice to see the frame was in surprisingly great shape, but it was obvious the truck had been parked for quite some time because leaky seals everywhere. The teardown then moved to the front of the truck where I would be doing the killer dowel pin fix as well as a much needed front end rebuild. And most of these rebuild jobs, they're not upgrades, it's just bringing the truck back to stock but I did include a steering box stabilizer, which was one of the highly recommended upgrades from the viewers. All of the steering components are relatively easy. They're just bolt-on parts, but the front axle was a bit of a challenge for me. Not necessarily in the work, but in sourcing the correct parts. I got the axle shafts machined back to a perfect surface, new seals, new hubs, new U-joints and brakes, and then reassemble. It's not completely necessary to take the front clip off to do either of these jobs, but if you have the time, it makes things way easier. Now continuing with the rebuild, I did new U-joints in the front and rear drive shaft, new shift linkage for the four wheel drive, new carrier bearing, removed the old catalytic converter and muffler and replaced with new. Brand new and desperately needed heavy duty leafs, new brakes in the back, new wheel seals, and new inner and outer wheel bearings. And of course, new oil and fluids throughout the truck. Can you believe it? Phase two is officially here, which means building the camper platform and installing the camper. I'm very excited that I have some sponsored help on this one. A company out of Prince George, Stinger Welding, is helping build the platform and install the camper, but that means I have to get 300 kilometers north, so this truck has to get street legal, which means without a box or deck, I need mud flaps, lights and I'd like to put some type of small platform over the tires just to keep the rocks down a little bit. Compared to what we've had to do to this truck so far, this should be a total piece of cake. Let's get into it. Well, legal width of a vehicle is eight feet, six inches. And this is an eight foot sheet. So that should do the trick nicely. Plan's pretty basic. I'm just gonna weld brackets on to hold this plywood. It's all getting cut off after anyways. It ain't pretty, but it'll work. A lot of folks have been enjoying the build series that are mechanics by trade. Always appreciate reading your guys' comments. I know there's gonna be some welders out there. Please take it easy on me, I'm not a welder. When we cut the deck off, we left the wiring in okay shape anyways. So I'm just gonna go around with the test light, verify everything's working, and then just wire in some magnetic lights. 
First things first, gotta find just a running light. Looking for a left turn signal. And a right turn should be green. Oh, geez. <laughs> Broke it before it's even fixed. Right turn signal. And a left turn signal. Got brakes. Gee, things are looking pretty good. <laughs> For the first time on Destination Adventure, did it right on the first try. Can you believe it? My last concern is there's no weight in the back, so I might take just a whole bunch of scrap iron from things I pulled off the truck, stack it on that little deck. Give me a little bit of weight in the back. Figured it out. I can use one of the boxes from the old flat deck, mount it on the new flat deck, what the heck? then fill it with stuff. I just gotta get it out of the scrap pile. Come on, baby. Not sure if I'm gonna get any traction, but here we go. Oh, we're doing it. I think this is one of those scenarios where it doesn't really matter how much you plan. You're never gonna feel totally ready. So I think we're just gonna go for it. Voyage, here we go. Lacking in traction. I think I have like, I don't know, <clears throat> six or seven hundred pounds of weight just in scrap metal on the back of this thing. But it snowed like all day yesterday. Either way, got four wheel drive. bought brand new tires for the truck but this is just not funny look at that that's no good I think it's about minus seven right now but for sure it'll warm up to I think in the positives today so we're gonna start just slow We'll just see how she goes. I forgot to cut a hole in my deck for the filler hose. <laughs> so I'm filling through the sending unit hole. A little bit ridiculous, people are staring. <laughs> Just over 70 kilometers into our trip here, which is more than enough for a first impression. 
I definitely didn't get the steering alignment as close as I thought. I thought I had it pretty good. The truck's, it's really wanting to walk around on the road and the steering wheel's at 45 degrees, which drives me crazy. It'd be nice to get that fixed. The suspension in the back, these new leaves, they're so friggin' stiff without any weight on the back. <laughs> I'm just bouncing like crazy in this thing. Other than that, truck is running great. Things have taken a turn for the worse. I have either my back right brake is locked on or the bearings piled up. One of the two. Finally got it stopped up there. My poor brand new tires. Well, we're moving. I think it was something stuck inside the drum. Put it in reverse and it broke free. Nothing seems overly hot. The hub was warm, so it shouldn't be a piled up bearing. I'm just gonna cruise along here for a little bit. Here's the game plan. That road, it's a forest service road, but it loops around right to the shop I'm trying to get to. I'm gonna just kind of putt along. It's only 14K. I'll keep checking to see if my hub's getting hot, but should be able to drive this thing the rest of the way. The good news is we made it. The bad news is making it didn't really come with good news. But the good news is I'm working with a company that can handle some bad news. So let's just get straight into it. The camper I purchased has come with some very unfortunate damage from the previous owner. The way he had it mounted to the trailer didn't properly support the weight and the fiberglass along the bottom has been quite compromised. To me, this was very sad news, but to Stinger Welding, just a fun challenge. So the plan is to build a platform with kind of like a cradle that will not only support the camper, but actually act as somewhat of an exoskeleton to not just restore the structural integrity, but drastically improve it. By the time I had arrived with the truck, the company had an entire game plan and were ready to get to work. So in the spirit of staying out of the way, I'm saving the back brakes investigation for a later date. But there are some important truck things that I can tackle. You guys remember back to episode number, I think it was number one, where we were having some problems with the grid heaters. I replaced the solenoids for that. It turned out not to be the solenoids. Unfortunately, it seems like we're having a PCM issue, which is a pretty common thing for this truck. The PCMs are incredibly difficult to find. The great thing about this truck is you don't actually need the PCM, especially since it's standard transmission, but you do need some of the things that the PCM does. So we're gonna do a couple bypasses today. I'm putting the grid heater onto a push button in the cab, and then I'm putting an external charge controller on here. I seem to be having some charging issues. It hasn't become a full-time problem yet but may as well just get ahead of the problem and bypass it, and we never have to worry about it when we're on the road. This job is actually quite easy because you can use most of the existing hardware. The large wires going to the grid heater, you will leave alone. The small wires going to the PCM are the ones you'll be cutting. The green wires, you will run straight to ground. The orange wires, you will go 12 volts through your switch, and that is the trigger activating the solenoids. I don't anticipate any issues with a short, but I'm putting in an inline fuse just in case. Better safe than smoldering. I'm pretty happy with this install. I can't test it right now because the battery's unhooked because they're welding on the back of the truck. So we're on to phase two, which is external voltage regulator. All this does is turn your, tell your alternator to turn on and off. This one is out of a 1989 Dodge 3500 with the 12 valve Cummins, same engine. I'm building my own wiring harness on this one, but there are kits online that are far more plug and play. Either way, it's pretty straightforward. You only have two wires that can go to either side of the alternator since it's alternating current. 
And on this particular charge controller, you need a 12 volt source patched in. You can patch your exciting wire in either through a toggle or a keyed source. Otherwise, it will drain your battery when the engine's not running. I'm going to a keyed source in the fuse box and I'm just using a fuse tap. The only other necessary bypass you have to do on these 12 valve Cummins is the fuel shutoff solenoid. Because if your charging fails and your batteries go dead, the solenoid will shut off your fuel. This one has been replaced with a pull cable, officially making this truck 100% functional without a computer. The ultimate engine for an expedition truck. To say that I'm excited that the build has finally progressed outside of this shop is an understatement. But I'll be honest with you guys, feeling a little lonely around here without the old gal. But I'm only home for the weekend, then back to Prince George next week, hopefully to wrap up the installation, but we'll just see how everything goes. But let's go over this week's cost breakdown, and it might be the lowest one yet. Those magnetic lights, those were in the camper when I bought it, so free. Accommodation in Prince George. I'm staying with my cousin Matt and his wife Haley, so accommodations are free. And they just had a brand new baby. Congratulations, Matt and Haley. The charge controller, $32. Pig nose connector, $13. The push button for the grid heater, $12. And then just some wiring sundries and fuel to get to Prince George, $150, giving us a grand total of $207. Nice and low, which is a very welcome change. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of My Old Man's Truck, the build series. And I hope you're getting excited that we'll finally be back on the road soon. Most of all, thanks for watching, everybody.